For this short web clip, we're going to look at using Torch for iterative design. So this picks up from an earlier web clip, which involved aligning molecules with Torch and Forge, and the link is shown below. In this case, we used a reference, which was a ligand in a bioactive conformation from the one OIT crystal structure, and we had a series of cyclin-dependent kinase ligands that we were aligning to that one OIT ligand. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use one of these smaller CDK ligands as a fragment to design a bigger ligand that better matches the field point pattern exhibited by the one OIT ligand. So to do iterative design within Torch, we need to have our molecules aligned to a reference and then we begin our design process. And we'll use Cresset's Molecule Editor to make modifications to a structure and compare those modifications back to the reference. So this is bioisosteric substitution using our medicinal chemistry know-how. As we make changes to our molecule, we'll see that the alignment score is updated. So this gives you immediate feedback about how your ideas, your design ideas, stack up to the reference. So this is on the fly design. So using the Torch's molecule editor, we choose the reference structure, we align test molecules to the reference structure, we make modifications to a test molecule to design a new ligand, and then we can choose to keep or discard changes at every step of our design process. So when the alignment finishes, what we see in the torch panel is we see that we have an alignment score, so the similarity score, which is 50% fields, 50% shape. And it's worth mentioning that we are aligning on the field points, not on the substructure or on the structure or the positions of the atoms. And we've got a number of these, and the one that we'll be interested in is this 1PXO ligand, which has an alignment score of about 0.6. And we see this in the window here, and what we'll see is that this is a fragment. And what we're going to do in this experiment is we're going to build, coming off this amine group, to uh, develop a ligand that takes advantage of these field points that are exhibited by this portion of the reference structure. So just to recap, We've got our ligand, so our 1OIT reference structure. We've got our ligand fragment that we're going to start with. And I'm showing them overlaid here to show where the connection is happening. So we've got this fragment that's taking, you know, it's aligning well with this section of the molecule. And we're going to grow out towards this end of the molecule. So now here's an example that I made earlier with the original web clip. So I have this series of ligands of these cyclin-dependent kinase ligands, and I've aligned these to the one OIT structure, which is shown in green here. If we scroll down through to the one PXO ligand and select it, we see the same graphic that was just shown in the PowerPoint presentation. And we can see how that aligns. And we can also show these side by side. So now what I want to do is I'm going to right click on this one PXO entry in the molecule table, and I'm going to edit a copy. So I'm gonna create a copy of it in the molecule editor. So what we see now is we have that one PXO ligand. We're showing the in the lower left-hand corner, we're showing the alignment score to the reference. And if we click this reference button over on the right-hand button bar, we can turn our reference structure on and off so we can guide our design efforts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the exact same fragment. So this phenyl sulfonamide moiety onto this amine and see what happens to our alignment score. So the first thing we need to do is add a phenyl ring and we'll spin, whoops, let's control Z to correct that. We'll spin that around because we want this to align fairly well to where our, our, uh, our sulfonamide and our phenyl group are. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add our sulfur. So there's our sulfur. We'll add a couple of oxygens. And you'll see that I made a mistake earlier. And to, uh, to go back, it's simply Control Z, the same as with any Microsoft product. And we've got our amine. We'll add the hydrogens. We don't need to charge for pH 7, but I usually do anyway. We'll do a quick minimization. And we'll optimize our alignment. So if we optimize our alignment, what we see is that our score has gone up just a little tiny bit. So initially it was 0 
We've now gone up to 0.656. Let's take a look at our reference and see what's going on here. So it looks like if we rotate this bond a little bit, a little bit this way, and if we rotate the sulfur group around this way, again do a quick minimization and optimize the alignment, we now have a score of 0.748. So I'm pretty happy with the modification that I made. So now what I can do here is I can make some notes so we can say modified 1px. Oh, and I can make some notes that this was iterative design project. And I can click OK to keep it. But the first thing we want to do is process it. So we want to process this one molecule with the same conditions that we used for all of the other molecules in our molecule table. And you'll see that this shows up and we have an alignment score of zero. So this means it hasn't been done yet. So let's go ahead and do this. And it'll just take a moment. Now the, that the alignment of our modified 1PXO is finished, we now see that we have an alignment score of 0 0.83, which is substantially better than the 1.0603 that we had with our fragment. And we can overlay those and look at those in a grid together. So this concludes our short web clip today, doing iterative design within Torch or Forge. If you have any questions or would like to take part in a free 30-day trial, we encourage you to visit our website or send an email to inquiries at crescent-group.com. Thank you and have a great day.